Let's build one together. I know how to make one, but I don't have the starting material nor the right tools. Looks like you are determined to create your very own star, aren't you? Perhaps you are better equipped than I am. Along with my instructions, we can indeed create a star. Ready? Okay, here's what we need. A huge amount of hydrogen and helium and perhaps some lithium. And you can add in other elements if you have access to them. But it is hydrogen and helium that's really important. Do you have them? That's too little. Do you have some more? Hmm, still not enough. We need truckloads and truckloads and truckloads of hydrogen. Come on, I know you have some more. Oh my god, that covers a whole continent. Although that's enough for a miniature star, I'd recommend a tad bit more hydrogen if you want something more spectacular. Also, it gets easier the more hydrogen we have. Besides, we won't be making a star on Earth. It'll be dangerous for obvious reasons. Let's look up for empty space and build it there, shall we? Perfect. Well, almost. I'd always ask for more, but that will do for now. We have the starting material now. A massive cloud of gas, mainly hydrogen, and dust comprising of other elements. All stars are born this way. From the remnants of previous stars that went supernova are born new ones. The gas and dust cloud is at equilibrium, involving the internal gravitational forces and the kinetic energy of the dust and gases. When disturbed, the gravitational forces may overpower the other forces and pull in the gas and dust creating small masses which subsequently gain more mass. These masses keep gaining mass until they are dense enough to induce high temperatures at their cores because of the pressure. When hot enough, fusion starts at the core. Hydrogen fuses to helium to give radiation. We perceive it as heat and light and that characterizes a star. This tiny star is called a protostar. Naturally, shock waves from other supernovae or from the galaxy's arms trigger this collapse. However, since we don't have enough time, we're going to compress the gas cloud manually using the huge mechanical arm that Elon Musk donated to us. Thank you for your help, Elon. You can clearly notice the protostar forming. We have created our very own star. The remaining dust and gas would be useful too, but right now, these would form a ring around the baby star. We call this the protostar's accretion disk. The radiation from the star would blow away the mass in this disk. But also, it helps create planets that would eventually orbit it. This is the reason I ask for more hydrogen and other elements. It increases the chances for planet formation. The accretion disk would have particles colliding with each other, eventually clumping into masses we call planets. There we have our first star, quite small but somewhat similar to our sun. It will now continue fusion at its core, but as they say every good thing comes to an end. In the initial stages of the star, it uses the hydrogen gas within it to generate energy. Hydrogen is comparatively easier to fuse and produces more heat once fused than it is required to fuse them. These reactions are called exothermic reactions. Over the course of billions of years, the hydrogen inside the star gets slowly used up. Slowly, the star starts fusing helium and works its way upwards fusing heavier elements. But there is a problem. When heavier elements are fused, they tend to generate less energy as the output. When further heavier elements are fused, they tend to require more energy than what the output once fused. This graph shows the atomic binding energy of the various elements on the periodic table. It gives us an insight to how stable the nucleus of these various elements are, as well as how much energy is released if fused. The iron nucleus is very stable. When it is used to create higher elements, the energy released is very little to keep the star going. The only effect is that the iron just accumulates at the star's core. Now, the star is always in a constant battle to keep itself stable. There is the pressure from the inside due to the fusion, which is outward. Then, there is work of gravity itself, which acts inward. With the pressure from the inside weakening because of lack of fusion providing lesser energy, the star gives into the gravitational force. As the star collapses, the inward pull accelerates the fusion of the remaining hydrogen and lighter elements, thus creating a violent explosion we call a supernova. This usually occurs if there was a lot of mass in the star in the first place. A larger mass ensures the star makes it to creating heavier elements. 
Our star, as similar to the Sun, doesn't have enough mass to create elements like iron, so it would probably stop when it fuses oxygen. These small stars disperse off as planetary nebulae. What is left of the star is the core, which runs on the remaining fuel. This is a white dwarf. Soon, the white dwarf stops shining and it dies out silently as a black dwarf. So depending on how much hydrogen you fed it initially, it would either die as a black dwarf, or either it will go supernova and subsequently a neutron star, or probably collapse under its own gravity and form a black hole. In any case, seeing your own creation die or go rogue is very painful. Thankfully, I'm not going to live a billion years to witness it, or are you? Thank you for watching this video. It is only because of your support that this channel is still running, or else our fate would have been somewhat similar to a white dwarf. If you really think you learned something new today, hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. Until then, stay happy, stay curious.